Today, we'll be discussing beer weapons. We'll divide this into two parts. First, weapons that you can find on the ground, aka ground loot weapons. And second, custom weapons that you'll find in airdrops. Let's talk about ground loot weapons. Here's a list of all the weapons you can find in the game. And now we're gonna dive into it. Oh, and if you find the worst possible gun when you spawn, take it anyway before finding something better. Now let's talk about ARs. Which ones are good and which ones should you avoid? If you're looking for an AR that you can use for close to medium range in BR, then AK-47, M4, Kilo 1 for 1, Grau, DRH, and BK-57 are all good choices. In BR, the bullet spread accuracy is increased compared to MP, so when a Grau or a DRH in MP is kinda inaccurate, in BR, it's decent. You can always put a precise shot mode which boosts the BSA. FFAR and ASVAL are also really good choices, but they're not meant to be used for mid-range. You really want to use them in close range and try to avoid taking long-range gunfights with them. If you do, you must know that you'll be disadvantaged because of the time to kill. Groza isn't terrible but I recommend switching to something else if you can. The best option you can use however is the CR56 AMAX. It's not great in MP but in BR thanks to incredible multipliers, it makes it the best AR in the game even for custom weapons. In general with ARs, nothing is too bad but the best option is the CR56 AMAX. While I do enjoy playing on my tablet, it doesn't fit inside my pockets and I still want to be able to game on the go. And for that, Red Magic 9 Pro is my perfect companion. They're coming out with the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3. Its CPU and its GPU are now 32% and 34% faster. So, your games will run smoother and quicker. And the best part? It uses less power, 34% less for the CPU and 38% less for the GPU. Combine that with its 65mAh battery means you get to enjoy games more with no worries. I play Six Fingers with mobile shooters now and trying to play flat with Red Magic's new design eliminates the wobbling compared to phones with camera bumps. I got the sleek design which looks really clean and can pass as a normal daily phone with monster performance. If I decide to play Asphalt 9 Legends, that's where the 520Hz shoulder triggers come in, giving me more control with customizable lights. It's got upgraded cooling with the ICE 13, a 10 layer cooling system with a big vapor chamber under the screen, together with a high speed fan that's really quiet. You get a big, clear view of your game with its 6.8 inch full HD plus screen. While being really responsive, it reacts quickly to your touch and shows colors really well even in low light settings. Plus, it's got a special certification that means it's easy on your eyes. And the best part? The screen is tough, thanks to Gorilla Glass 5. The camera bump might be gone, but it still comes with upgraded cameras that capture clear and sharp images. You're getting a main camera and a wide angle camera that's perfect for taking pictures of day to day life. One thing I really appreciate about this phone is how they made it better for one handed use. All the buttons are on the right side, so they're easy to reach. This includes the volume and power buttons and the game space slider. The Red Magic 9 Pro is really impressive. If anyone I know is looking for a gaming phone today, I'd highly recommend this one. You can buy it using the link below. And big thanks to Red Magic for sponsoring today's video. When it comes to LMGs, you have three choices. RPD, M4 LMG, and the Bruin MK9. The RPD is really good with great range, 100 bullets per mag, no recoil, and decent bullet spread accuracy. It's a really nice weapon. M4 LMG is also good with a slightly slower fire, but nothing really that much slower. However, the iron sight might not be as good. The Bruin, on the other hand, has a way faster fire rate, a way worse iron sight, and the time to kill drops down after 15 meters, so I wouldn't recommend it. So, for LMGs, RPD is best, followed by M4 LMG. With SMGs, they are all pretty good in terms of damage, mobility, and bullet spread accuracy. However, some have smaller magazines which might put you in tricky situations. If you don't have an extended mag mode, you'll prefer to use the PDW and the PPSH. If you do have an extended mag, QQ9, UXR, and OTS9 are as good as the PPSH. You'll still have fewer bullets than a PPSH, but with 40 QQ9 bullets, you can easily take down two enemies, so you'll be just fine. CX9 and SX9 have more limited range and worse damages, so they're not necessarily the go-to choice, but they are decent enough to be used. PDW is slightly different from the rest because it's really easy to use even for mid-range gunfights. So if you're running a setup with a sniper, it's definitely a good choice. Moving forward, let's talk about snipers. We have two types, semi-auto and bolt action. 
If you're looking for a semi-auto sniper, M21 EBR is a good choice. It's the only one available in ground loot. If you're looking for a bolt action sniper, DLQ and ZRG are both good choices. They can one shot in the head and two shots in the body as long as you don't hit the legs. So they're both usable. When it comes to shotguns, any shotgun you can find is good to use. For the potential one-shot shotgun, which are the BY-15, the KRM, and the HSO-405, you might prefer one or the other, but they're all extremely good. For the SPAM shotguns, any of them is good to use. They are all extremely powerful in close range, and it's just a matter of preference. Right now, you can find the BY-15, the KRM, and the Jack-12 on the ground. Any of them are good to use, even if I slightly prefer the KRM. I can only tell you to try the others to see which one you prefer. Another disclaimer, even if the next season the ground loot changes, all the shotguns can be used and will be good to use. The only marksman rifle available as a ground loot is the Kilo Bolt Action, and if you find it on the ground, rest in peace mate. When it comes to airdrop weapons, any shotgun can be used for close quarters combat. For close range in general, Fennec, QQ9, QXR, OTS9, REST 79U and PPSH 41 are the go-to choices. PPSH is the most noob-friendly since it has more bullets, but the others aren't that hard to use either. They are meant to use for hip fire spam. Here are the gunsmiths we use for them. For slightly more mid-range, still in the SMG category, PP-19 Bison, PDW, and AGR-556 are the best choices. These ones aren't meant to use for hipfire spam. You can still hipfire but we mostly want to strafe for them and spam because we have a super large mag. Here are the gunsmiths we use for them. For the close range part of ARs and LMGs, we have the Type 25 and the FFAR. The Type 25 with the stopping power mag has one of the best time to kill in close range, and the FFAR also has a good time to kill in close range, close to what we have with the Type 25, but it's easier to use thanks to a faster fire rate. For mid or long range AR, the M4 is one of the best options because it has no recoil and one of the most broken aim assists in the game. Apart from that, it's not necessarily the best weapon. Then we have 4 weapons that are just above everything else. The Odin, the S36, the Amax, and as an MP, the HVK30. Odin has a slow fire rate with super accurate bullet spread accuracy making it good for long range fights. The Amax also has a good BSA, but thanks to a faster fire rate, it's easier to use in general. Its multipliers make it better than the Odin if you can aim for the head, chest, and arms. S36 is super easy to use thanks to pretty much no recoil and a super large mag. You can also equip disable on it, which slows the enemies and makes tracking easier. Lastly, the HVK30 is overpowered in multiplayer with the large caliber mag as long as you can aim for the head and the chest, and it's overpowered for the same reason in BR. Care the gunsmiths for them. When it comes to semi-auto rifles, SVD, XPR, M21 EVR, and SKS are all usable for long range. Just pick the one you prefer after trying them, and here are the gunsmiths for them. And lastly, for snipers, anything that can one-shot in the head is a good choice. So fitting this pretty simple description, we have the DLQ, the ZRG, the Ritec, and the HDR. All of them have their strengths. The Ritec has the fastest fire rate, the ZRG deals the most damage to vehicles, the HDR has the fastest bullet velocity, and the DLQ is the best compromise between these three, also having the fastest ADS speed. I have to mention the SPR which can one shot in the head under 50 meters, which can be fun to use if you're looking for some challenge. In BR, you have two weapons, and you need to optimize the combination of weapons you're using to be as good as you can be on a purely tactical plan. You can run, for example, a close or mid-range SMG with an AR or LMG made for long range, or even a sniper if you're confident enough. Or, you can use a shotgun with a basic AR like the AMAX. My best advice on what weapon to use is that you don't want to use two weapons for the same purpose, like using an S36 with a DLQ or a KRM with a Bison, obviously. Try to have some variety in what you're using and you'll be just fine. It's kinda hard to make videos describing BR weapons without making something that long, so if you enjoyed this video and want to see more like it, let us know down in the comments below. If you're an MP player, you might want to know the best perks you can use in the game today, right here. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.